Hi, I'm Zibby Owens, the creator and host of the award-winning podcast that you're listening to right now, thank you so much, called Moms Don't Have Time to Read Books. It is a daily podcast, 365 days a year, and each day we talk to an author about all of the things related to their career, their book, their life, and more in 30 minutes or less, because who has time? I am now an author myself, although I wasn't when I started this podcast, and you can get my new memoir, Bookends, a memoir of love, loss, and literature, wherever books are sold starting July 1st, and my children's book, Princess Charming. You can learn more about me at zibbyowens.com, but really, you're here to learn more about the authors, and that is what we're going to do. Also, be sure to check out all the other podcasts in the Zcast Podcast Network. You can learn more at zcastnetwork.com. Dot com and definitely check out those shows as well. Also, just a quick note that submissions for the Zibby Awards are open and will close on September 15th. Go to zibbyowens.com and you will find the Zibby Awards open submissions where we celebrate all the under-celebrated parts of a book, like the best spine, the best author's note, the best table of contents. And authors can nominate their own best publicists, best editors, and so on. There will be an in-person award ceremony in October in New York. You will not want to miss it. Go to zibbyowens.com. Karen Wynn is the author of Our Little World, a novel. Karen received her MFA from Farley Dickinson University. She also holds a doctoral degree in nursing. Born and raised in New Jersey, Karen now lives in Boston with her husband and two children. Our Little World is her first novel. Welcome, Karen. Thank you so much for coming on Moms Don't Have Time to Read Books to discuss Our Little World. Thank you so much for having me. I'm so excited to be here. I could not stop reading this book. It was so immersive. I I feel like this is such a good example of like what the type of book I'm trying to like produce myself with Zibby books because there is such a strong sense of place and voice. I didn't want to stop reading. You're like, you created such real characters. I cared about all of them. I wanted to know what was going to happen next. Anyway, I just really, really enjoyed it. It was really, it was good. Yeah. I really appreciate that. Thanks. Okay. So tell listeners what your book is about, please. So Our Little World, it's a coming of age story with a looming mystery. It's set in the 1980s in a small idyllic New Jersey town. And the story is about these two sisters, B and Audrina, B's a rising seventh grader, and really how their relationship fractures when a neighborhood girl goes missing. Very interesting. Well, there is so much. I mean, even the, from the point of view of the parents and the townspeople and how this affected the whole community. And yeah. And then even I was really interested in, in I mean, I don't know. I, don't, I hope it's not giving anything away. If so, I'll cut this part out. But the diabetes storyline, can I, we talk about that or is that a secret? I mean, can we talk about it without talking, without naming it? Sure. Or yeah. yeah. So it was also really interesting how you had one of the sisters develop a medical issue and how that affects a family. Because when somebody is sick and suddenly all the attention is on one sibling, what happens to the other sibling, right? What happens then? So tell me about how this whole story came to be, especially the missing child angle. Was this like from a place of fear of your like, wh- where did this what if come from for you? And then go through with the siblings. So the story inspiration. Um, so the town of Hammond is a fictionalized, it's a small 5,000 person town, a very safe community where nobody ever goes missing. And it is a fictionalized version and anagram of my hometown, Mendham, New Jersey. Ah. Um, I did grow up in this bubble in this idyllic neighborhood in town. And I, as a writer am drawn and reader, am drawn to exploring those darker elements, those cracks in relationships and families and, and towns. And so I really just wanted to almost insert a tragedy into the childhood that I knew and see what happens. The actual starting point for the story, so what happens is there's this family from Boston that moves to Hammond across the street from B and her sister Audrina, and there's cute Max Baker and then his little four-year-old sister Sally, and it's been a week of rain. It's 1985, and these kids have been cooped up, and finally they have this beautiful day, and they decide to go swimming at the local lake, and they go there, so it's B and Audrina and Max and Sally. And Sally goes missing. And that 
specific incident, I also drew on from my own childhood. So there was this lake, Sunrise Lake, which is what Deer Chase Lake in the book is based on. And I used to go swimming there as a child and I used to love to swim underwater. My mom used to call me a fish. And one time I was there and, you know, kept dipping underwater and coming back up. And when I resurfaced, I saw everybody exiting the lake and I wasn't sure why. So I followed them out and there was mass confusion on the, it had this little Sandy beach on the Sandy beach. And I hadn't even heard the lifeguard blow the whistle, but he must've, I was just underwater. So I didn't hear it. And I was trying to find my mom. And finally I found her and she just had this like panic looked on her look on her face. And the lifeguard who was probably this really nervous high schooler lifeguard was literally grabbing girls and saying, is this her? And then I realized that my mom couldn't find me. So that was they had emptied the lake. And it's one of those moments in childhood that are just one of those visceral memories. And, and it always stayed with me. And from a writing standpoint, I just thought, you know, you talked about the inciting incident, right? What sets into motion the story. I just thought it was a great starting point for a story. Like what if I or someone else had gone missing that day? So, but it's fiction. Um, I, you know, never knew anyone who went missing. So I feel so bad for your mom. that <laughs> She went through that. Yeah. And as a mom now, I totally have two kids. I totally appreciate that. So, yeah. I was on the beach once where somebody thought somebody was missing and everybody stood up to look and parents were freaking out. And the, the daughter, the girl turned up, she had like walked down the beach, but there is this collective, like, oh my, you know, everybody stands and is looking and I'm like, who are we looking for? Like, and there's just the, the pan, like just abject panic that are you really in the middle of this like horrific moment in someone's life or not? So right. yeah. You're just waiting. Yeah. Right. You're just You're waiting. waiting. And is it, do you just keep waiting? And then that's obviously the waiting just, you know, gets stretched out and it, it, the terrible happens. Right. Or is there some sort of more immediate resolution like the girl walking down the beach? Right. It's, this was in, what was that movie? The Lost Daughter. Did you see that? I didn't. It was with a British actress who I think was nominated for everything this year. But there is a scene where she's in the speech and like a, a girl. I mean, it's not that it's so, but anyway, you might want to watch it. <laughs> I think that's what it's called. Anyway, it doesn't matter. Yes. So tell me more. Okay. So you have that. Tell me about the sister relationship. And I know you have a sister as we were just chatting about. Tell me about that and sort of introducing this illness component. Cause I, I did find that piece very compelling too, with, you know, one of them having more, not mental, but you know, th- hair pulling, like more mental challenges in the moment and one more physical challenges in the moment. Yeah. So like you alluded to earlier, I was really interested in, so the story is, is this girl goes missing, but it's really about how her disappearance sets into motion, all this other stuff that happens with the sisters, with the, with the family, with the neighborhood, with the town. And I was just really interested in exploring those cracks kind of beneath the surface and how they rise up when something like this can happen. So with the sisters in particular, so I do have a sister, um, we're very close, but you know, I was really interested in exploring those, those moments in sisterhood that, you know, aren't so wonderful and then kind of pushing on those and, and, and making those more heightened. Mm-hmm. And so I, I did that. And then also with the, the relationship with the parents and um, other stuff, I'm really interested in the kind of drama that can occur within relationships. And then in terms of how this, this tragedy affected everyone involved. So these two sisters, so one of them does develop more of a So I wanted her to basically to have some physical response to the trauma of this missing girl. And there's also something that B, my protagonist does that day at the beach and we give away too much, but essentially she takes something that maybe could be an evidence, uh, crime evidence, and she takes it because she wants it. And then that's all I'm going to say about that. But that guilt of that action is also weighing on her. Um, So we have the trauma of this four-year-old girl who's gone missing and the guilt of this action. And then there's a lot of sibling rivalry and tensions in this household And I wanted her to have some sort of physical manifestation of all of this. And so I I thought, well, what could I do? And I was 
doing some research and essentially, I guess we are, we're not giving away too many spoilers, but she starts pulling her hair. So I dove deep into trichotillomania, which is what that's called, called and, and all of that. And I'm, I'm a, I have a nursing background. I've worked as a registered nurse, a nurse practitioner, and I have my doctoral degree in nursing. So I have a lot of medical experience in order to, and, and also the research component I could carry out as well. Um, so kind of dove deep into what that would have been like in the 80s. And um, also there's this other, there's a, actually a chronic, very devastating illness that occurs with the other sister, mm-hmm. Audrina. And I'm, I'm not going to give away spoilers there. So I'm not going to talk about yeah. what, what it is, but I was interested in, so from the start, she always had this in my mind. Mm-hmm. And it was only a matter of it kind of coming out the timing that it did. And, you know, I think as a, as a, someone who's just been so entrenched in the medical field, I just feel like illness is kind of always there, either waiting to occur or part of somebody. And so I feel like illness just makes its way into my writing. (laughs) And from the start, Audrina in my mind was this, she's the perfect sister, quote unquote. And he's very jealous of her because she's kind of the family favorite and the beautiful one. But I wanted her, she was very vulnerable in my mind from the start. And this condition that she develops contributed to her vulnerability and and really kind of made her very raw in so many different ways. So interesting. Wow. (laughs) Wait, so where, tell me about the intersection of writing and nursing. Did you, did you want to do both of those things your whole life or when did the writing piece, when did you find, were you working full-time as a nurse and writing this book? Like, tell me the trajectory of those careers. Yeah. So I've always had these two loves medicine, nursing, and and writing. And I've always done both. And I mean, even in college, like I took some extra writing classes. And and then when I was working full-time as a registered nurse, I did a low residency MFA. Um, So I was always pursuing writing and have had to focus more on like one versus the other different points in my in my life. And then I would say in 2016 was when I really got serious about this novel idea that I'd been kicking around for a while. But, you know, I've been in a writing group here in Boston since 2009. We're still going strong. We meet monthly. So I really have pursued these two interests from the start. But yeah, I would say in the last few years, I really was when I was like, okay, if I'm not going to do this, when am I going to do this? And I, uh, at that time I was working as a nurse practitioner and I took some time off work to work on the novel. And I had my mom come up from New Jersey. I live in Boston. She came up from New Jersey and watched, I have two kids, watched the kids. And I actually, instead of going to work, I would go to work on my novel. And it was scary because, I mean, I didn't know what was going to come of this, you know, and I'm I'm a new writer. And, and it, I always used to be like, people, people used to be like, well, what do you do? And I'd be like, well, I'm a nurse. And I almost, almost used to whisper, but I like to write. You know, (laughs) I'm a writer. I'd be like, but I like to write. Mm -hmm. So it was a real commitment to myself to say, to put the time aside, dedicated time to like speak the words, even to ask for help and to do it. And, you know, I think aspiring writers, I give them all the credit because you just, you have no idea what's going to happen, right? You're doing this because you love writing. And yeah, but for so long, these characters being Audrina were sitting, you know, in my head and I just felt like I had to tell their story. Wow. That's awesome. I love it. So did you end up finishing it all during your time off from work? Like that's, yeah. I mean, so I've been working on it for a long time. I would say 2016 was when I was said to myself, I want to have a finished good draft. Right. And I, I, to be honest, Zibby with the pandemic, I feel like my memory is just shot. (laughs) Oh, I I don't mean to put you, I don't even, I'm just making conversation here. You don't have to, you could make it all up. It doesn't matter. I, uh, was it, it was, was it like a three month period where I wrote a first draft of my novel? No, you know, I have been working on this idea loosely for many years. That was probably me when I finally was like, okay, I'm going to go through and have a good draft. And then I had an old writing teacher do a manuscript consult and I ended up, you know, rewriting the whole thing from the start. So, I mean, I took pieces of, of, of Mm -hmm. things that I had written in the first, in that draft, but you know, I, it, it was a process. I met my now agent at a writing conference here in Boston through Grub Street. Yep. And I had signed up to meet with her and I had submitted the first, I think 20 pages. And she said to me, 
send me this when you're done. And I think it was 18 months later that I sent it to her. So, you know, I, I took my time with it. And who's your agent? It it was so long that when I had the call with, with my agent, my sister actually said to me, don't tell her how long it took you to write. (laughs) (laughs) Well, it all, it all seems to have worked out. So there you go. Yeah, (laughs) That's really exciting. So how do you feel? So are you now back in, are you still nursing? Is that still your day job or what's the deal? Uh, so I do clinical consultant work now. I'm still doing that. I'm, uh, I took some time off with the launch, but I'll, I'll get back to that. I have yeah. some projects waiting for me. <laughs> and how, how old are your kids? My daughter is six and my son just turned 10, which makes Aww. me sad. <laughs> Aww, yeah. No, it's just going to keep getting better. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> Amazing. So are you working on a new project now? I am. Yeah, I'm working on a project, which I'm really excited about. It uh, takes place in Boston and it's about a group of women friends and actually a secret society. Mm. Essentially, it's going to be similar to our little world in that there's going to be relationships that unravel and secrets that come to light and there's going to be a tragedy. Wow. Yeah. So I'm very excited. I just had to call with my agent yesterday about it. So I'm very excited. Oh, that's yeah. awesome. Congrats. Thanks. What, uh, were there any alternate titles? Just wondering for this book or w- did you know oh, from the start? God. it was? Our- no, I'm, I'm the worst. With t- and it's <laughs> funny because after my agent and I got off the call yesterday about my um, book that I'm working on, she sent me a text and she's like, oh, I forgot to tell you. I don't love, and I, I don't even want to say what the name of that yeah, current yeah. is. Like, but I don't love that title. Like we need to, and I said, oh no. My response was, oh no, with like a laughing emoji. Here we go again. <laughs> you know? Oh my gosh. But I, I agree with her. So this book um, initially was called, and I have to like give the, the background info for it because otherwise it sounds so random, but it was initially called Secret Walking Sally. So Sally's the name of the girl that goes missing. And Audrina, the sister, was we mentioned she has a health condition and that made her kind of get up in the middle of the night, like potentially like almost like sleepwalking. And there are a lot of secrets in our little world. So at one point, B, my protagonist was thinking about all the stuff going on in her life and like thinking almost like a, of a pinwheel going around and around and everything was getting jumbled together. And eventually it like shortened in her mind to these three things, secret walk at Sally. That scene has since been cut because it's never <laughs> But um, actually my agent said to me when I sent it to her 18 months later, and she said, you know, when I first saw this secret walking Sally, it reminded me of a country song. <laughs> so yeah, she said, I can see that. We can- need to work on that title. And then it became our little world war because very much about these kind of mm-hmm. trouble, troubling relationships between the sisters and, and the family. But my editor thought it sounded a little bit like a historical a historic fiction novel, which I get Mm -hmm. war. So she said, what about just our little world? And I had to kind of come around. I mean, I think it's the perfect title now, but I did have to come around to that because I wasn't sure that it was encapsulating the kind of darkness in the book. But I think with the cover art, which they just nailed, they, it's the most beautiful cover ever. Totally. And there's this crack that goes down the middle. And I was just like, oh my gosh, that's just so perfect. And honestly, now I can't think of any other title for it. I just think it's the most perfect title. So it really is. It's a great cover. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Sometimes those are the hardest things, you know? Yeah. uh, (laughs) I've I've had so many of your blurbers on my podcast. This might be the biggest percent blurb overlap. Oh, <laughs> oh I, I mean, I just got so many, so many amazing blurbs. I felt so incredibly grateful to all the writers who blurbed me. Wow. Well, when you're not writing and nursing and dealing with the kids, like if you had a guilty pleasure, like what would it be? What would you do if you had a, like a day of free time or... Oh my gosh. I love Southern Charm, that reality show, Southern Charm. <laughs> That's yeah. probably, I don't really love reality TV, but I love that one. So I could binge on that or rewatch that. And yeah, I, I, I have a dog. He's right next to me here, a 85 pound Bernadoodle. He's like, my little, he's not little, but he's my big companion. So I would go for with him on a walk. I love the beach. I would probably go to the beach, lay in the sun for a little bit if it's sunny out. Yeah. Take some, read a book, of course. I'm always wanting to read more and I'd love to be able to have like a few uninterrupted hours just to like dive into a book. That'd be nice. 
Are you reading anything good now? I just, so I'm in a uh, Facebook group for debut authors. So having a, I am, it's, I'm lucky that I'm able to read a lot of advanced copies of these books. So just finished one called Groupies by Sarah Priscus that's coming out, I think in July, um, which I highly recommend about the groupie scene in the seventies, musical groupies. Mm -hmm, Um, mm -hmm. I guess groupies are always music bands, right? (laughs) Uh, maybe not, maybe not. And I'm about to start um, another one, The Secret, uh, sorry, The Candid Life of Mina Dave. And it's by Namrata Patel, The Candid Life of Mina Dave. And she is a fellow Boston writer. We actually, we both belong to this organization called the Writers Room of Boston. And we both at one point were on the board together, together there. So i am just got her book. So I'm really excited to dive into that. Wow. Wait, how do you get into the Facebook group of debut authors? <laughs> <laughs> Anyone can join. Anyone who has a book coming, a fiction, a novel coming out in 20. So I think there's been one every year, actually. Huh, that's so cool. Yeah. So there's a, uh, it's nice. We kind how, of many, how many people are in your group? Like, it's probably like 200 or so. Yeah. Yeah. That's so cool. That's really neat. Yeah. yeah. I, I was in the one for 20. 20, Cause my book originally was slated to come out in February instead of May. And then they bumped it to May. So originally I was in the, the 2021 Facebook group because mm-hmm. it kind of, it, it covers both that year. And then, you know, the first few months, cause you're really doing a lot of your marketing and stuff, obviously in the, in the months beforehand, but then I'm in the 2022 group. So oh, yeah. See, it's an unexpected benefit. If anyone from- wants to join that hasn't joined yet, just, just request, just find us. <laughs> Awesome. Karen, thank you so much. Again, I really, really enjoyed this book and you did a really great job and it's really been nice chatting with you. Thank you so much, Sibby. Thanks for having me. It's been a pleasure. My pleasure. My pleasure. Okay. Bye-bye. Bye. <laughs> Thanks for listening to this episode of Moms Don't Have Time to Read Books. Don't forget to follow me on Instagram at Zibby Owens and at Moms Don't Have Time to Read Books. Also sign up for my newsletter at ZibbyOwens.com and sign up for my virtual book club and meet lots of authors on Zoom every other week. Thanks so much to Steve and Ryan at Texture Sound for the sound editing. And thank you to Morning Moon Productions for providing this fantastic intro and outro music.